D&D &D number 5, Angels in Jesus' Name, chapter 16. His angel was It was dark, as usual. He smelled her first, before anything else. Next, he heard her sweet voice, but he couldn't understand what she was saying. She began with his face, just as before, only this time her hand was cool instead of warm and felt soothing on his brow. She caressed his cheek, then leaned close, and he breathed her in, her lips pressed against his forehead. He wanted to open his eyes. He needed to see her. He needed to make sure she was really here. Her hand ran over his chest, then down his arm, and finally took his hand and squeezed. There were some differences this time. She didn't touch him intimately, even though he certainly wouldn't have objected, and she didn't forbid him from moving. Slowly, his hand squeezed hers back. She called his name, and he willed his eyes to open. It took a few seconds, but finally, the light flooded in. Lisbeth, he whispered. Yes, Keegan, it's me. I'm here. Her voice broke, and she cried. He tugged on her hand. Don't cry, baby. Everything's okay, just like you said. She sniffed. Everything is not okay. Sure it is. I'm alive. He went on, speaking slowly, take time, taking time to enunciate each word. I'm free to come home with you and be your husband. I have a new job that pays great, and I think I'm going to like it, and I won't have to leave you. And everything's wonderful. She bent closer. How are you feeling? Sleepy. It's probably the pain medication. I can't stay awake. He looked up at her face. It's so good to see you. John came with you? Yes, he's outside waiting to see you. Let him wait. I just want you. She smiled and bent down and kissed his lips. Is it really all over now? It's over. The doctor says you were lucky. They had to repair a portion of your large intestine, and you lost a lot of blood, but the knife wasn't even close to your heart. If it had been <clears throat> any longer, though, it would have hit a major artery. Close call, huh? Her jaw tense, yes. But that didn't happen, thank goodness. Still, the doc says it's going to be some time before you're 100%. He sighed. Nah. Just watch me. I'm strong as a horse. I'll recover quickly, especially with you nearby. She squeezed his hand and his eyes drifted shut, then snapped back open. I keep falling asleep. It's okay. Rest. I'll stay right here. I don't want to rest. I want to be alert. Talk to me, Lisbeth. Please. About what? Anything. How are the girls? I spoke to Jody this morning. The girls are excited about going trick-or-treating tonight. It's Halloween. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to leave. You didn't have to know. You didn't have to, you know. You're kidding, right? He shrugged. I mean, I'm okay and the girls need you. Or there'll be plenty more Halloweens to come. Jody and Lisa are going to take pictures for me. But my place right now is with you. Keegan shook his head. I came into your life and turned it upside down, didn't I? Yes, she answered with a smile, but in a good way. Since you've been in my life, I've looked forward to every single day. Before, I was just forcing one foot in front of the other. He frowned. One foot in front of the other, but you never had anyone hit you. You'd never been assaulted until I came into your life. I don't want to talk about that, she said firmly. You're going to need to talk about it, sweetheart. I'm sick over what you've had to endure. If I feel that way, I can't imagine how you're feeling. And when I get out of here, we'll talk. It might do you good to speak to a counselor. There are groups for women who've been assaulted. Right now, let's just focus on you getting better and coming home. He nodded and smiled, and his eyelids fluttered. Sounds good, he mumbled. His hand squeezed hers. I can't stay awake. Well, then sleep. I'll be right here. He allowed his eyes to close, but only a few seconds later, the door opened and an older couple walked in. Lizzie looked up and smiled at them, and Keegan opened his eyes. Dad? Mom? Keegan said softly. 
The woman came forward quickly and Lizzie stepped back. Oh, Keegan, you had us so worried. Sorry, Mom, I know it's been a hard time for you, but I'm alive. Son, the man said. He took Keegan's hand. Lizzie edged her way toward the door, thinking to give them some privacy. Elizabeth, where are you going? I, uh, I just thought I'd step out for a minute. Don't go. Let me introduce you to my parents. Mom, Dad, this is Elizabeth Anderson. Oh, it's very nice to meet you, the woman said, her eyes zeroing in on Lizzie's face, which still had some bruising. It's nice to meet you too, Mr. Ms. Tanner. Oh, please call me Debbie. Thank you, she said, and most people call me Lizzie or Liz. Lizzie, how sweet. I like that. So are you two, well, what I mean is, are you together? Deb, give them a break, all right? It's okay, Dad, Keegan said, stifling a yawn. I don't mind answering. Yes, we're together. We're very much together. We're engaged to be married. Deb's hands flew to her face. Oh, oh, that's wonderful, she exclaimed. Lizzie smiled sweetly, if not somewhat nervously, at her. Keegan glanced up at Elizabeth, noting her hands twisting together and her teeth pressed into her bottom lip, and he smiled contentedly. Keegan's father stepped forward then. I'm Roger, he said kindly. It's very nice to meet you. He turned to his son. Congratulations, son. She's beautiful. Lizzie fidgeted, clearly uncomfortable. Keegan held his hand out to her, and she moved forward and grasped his fingers. We met while I was undercover. I fell completely in love, and I never stood a chance. I'm so happy, Deb said, her hands fluttering over her heart. Lizzie studied her. She was attractive, maybe mid-fifties, with short hair that was dark, a dark chestnut brown, and had some streaks of gray. Her hazel eyes were kind, and when she smiled, dimples gave her a young, girlish demeanor. No taller than Lizzie herself, her husband towered over her. Dressed casually in jeans and a sweater with pictures of fall leaves and pumpkins on it, she reminded Lizzie of her own mother. Roger, also dressed in jeans and a sweater, had dark, almost black hair, dark eyes, olive skin, and it was easy to see who Keegan took after, except he must have gotten his one dimple from his mom. I'm about to make you even happier, Keegan said, softly drawing a deep breath. Elizabeth was five. Elizabeth! has five of the cutest little girls you've ever seen, and they are in desperate need of grandparents. Dead gasped. Five? Lizzie nodded. It's a long story. Deb's hands clapped together. Oh, this is just too good to be true. Keegan's eyes started to close, and Roger watched as Lizzie bent down to peer into his face, and she looked back up. It's, it's the pain medication. Keegan roused himself. Lizbeth. Will you do me a favor and turn the pain meds off? Keegan, I... Please. I haven't seen my parents in over two years, not since I went undercover, and we have a lot of catching up to do. I can handle the pain, you know that. Sighing, she did as he asked. It's okay, Keegan said to his parents, noting the horrified looks. She's a nurse. That's how we met. When I had the accident that supposedly killed me, she was the one who took care of me. Lizzie drew a sudden breath. You... You thought he was really dead, didn't you? Yes, Roger answered. It was a bad time. But then Keegan's friend John came up and told us the truth, Deb said. Bless his heart, he'd come to the funeral too. John's here, Lizzie informed them. Yes, we saw him on our way in. Well, so much has happened, Keegan said. It's a very long story. Well, get to telling it, Deb said. Keegan looked apologetically up at Elizabeth, and she smiled sweetly. I'll go call the girls and get something to eat. Not alone, Keegan ordered. Okay, then I'll have John escort me. Keegan nodded, his lips pressed together, his brow creasing. Lizzie came forward. What's wrong? He didn't answer. You're already hurting, aren't you? A little. Like I said, I can handle it. If it gets too bad, call the nurse, she said. They'll be mad at me for turning it off, but I guess I can handle that. Oh, I'm beginning to believe that you can handle anything, he said. Kiss me goodbye. She did. New scene. When he first opened his eyes, he couldn't remember where he was, and then it came back to him in 
bits and pieces. His buddies had escorted Elizabeth and him home to the Pine Forest Inn. They'd moved his little family out to one of the two-bedroom cottages. The girls had been situated in one bedroom using two trundle beds, with the youngest twins sleeping together in one bed. It was tight, but would do until he could build Elizabeth a home worthy of her. Looking around the room he occupied, he had to, he had to smile. Five tiny blonde heads appeared over the edge of his bed, and five pairs of big blue eyes opened wide as he smiled at them. Well, hello there, my little angels, he said softly. Hi, Mr. Mike, Heather said. We missed you. Mommy told us you got hurt again. Yes, I did. I saw it on TV, Rose said. Some bad people cut you with a knife. Keegan frowned. Does your mom know you saw it on TV? She looked down. No. I was supposed to be in bed, and Mommy was gone with Mr. John, and I was scared, and I went downstairs to find Miss Jody, and they were watching TV, and I saw you. Sighing, he shook his head. I'm sorry you saw that, Rose. I cried. Sweetheart, he said softly. I can't pick you up right now, but will you come hold my hand? She moved toward the head of the bed and took his hand. There, that's better, he said. To his surprise, he looked down to see his other hand being lifted by Lily. He closed his hand around hers. I missed you, Mr. Mike, Violet said from her place at the foot of the bed. I missed you, too. He wiggled his foot at Daisy, who stood next to Violet. You okay, sweetie? Daisy nodded her head. I'm glad you came back. I was a good witch on Halloween. A witch? He laughed. A witch? You're so pretty. I can't even imagine being you as a witch. A good witch, she said again, emphasizing the good part. Good witches aren't ugly, Heather explained. We don't believe in being bad witches. Mommy says we can't be anything evil for Halloween because we love Jesus. She says some stuff about Halloween is evil, but we go out and give good. Your mommy is very wise. I was a pirate, Rose said, and Lily was a Yoda. Not a Yoda, Heather corrected, just Yoda. I can say it how I want, Rose argued, her chin lifting defiantly. Keegan chuckled. I bet you were a great pirate, Rose. What were you, Violet? I was a angel, she said softly. Mommy said, because I really am. She's right. And what were you, Heather? She shrugged nonchalantly as if it didn't matter to her what she'd been. I was a cowgirl. Mr. Chaz says I'm a natural on a horse, and I'd make a real good cowgirl. Her eyes lit up. Will you watch me ride, Mr. Mark? Mike? The Mr. Mike made him frown. Time to fix that. Yes, I'll watch you ride very soon. Listen, ladies, I have to tell you something. It's really important. All eyes stared at him quietly. When I told your mom my name was Mike, I was teasing her. I was pretending to be Mike. But my real name is Keegan. Keegan, Heather repeated. Uh-huh. Why were you teasing Mommy, Rose demanded. Well, there were some bad men trying to get me, and I didn't want them to know where I was, so I pretended to be someone else so they wouldn't find me. The girls were silent while they tried to understand. Does it bother you that my real name is Keegan? It's okay. Isn't it? Heather said to her sisters, who all nodded solemnly. We don't care if your name is Keegan. Okay, Keegan thought, at least that's over with. Time to tackle the next hurdle. Heather, do you remember when you said you didn't want me to ever leave? She nodded, her eyes wary of what he was about to say. Do you still feel that way? Yes. I was worried that you weren't coming back. How about the rest of you? Do you still want me to stay with you? Uh-huh, they said. How about you, Daisy? Do you want me to stay? She nodded her head. He tugged on Lily's hand. How about you, Lily, sweetheart? She nodded with a smile. He smiled. Well, good then, because I'd like to stay with you. Forever? Heather asked. Yes, Heather, forever. He and Elizabeth would sit down together and talk to them about getting married, so he didn't go any further. You're in Mommy's bed, Rose said, her little eyebrows arched accusingly. Keegan smiled at her as he quickly tried to figure out how to address the subject. Um, he said, humming the word. 
Mommy says she doesn't mind sleeping on the couch. Well, I mind. As soon as I get a little better, I'm going to sleep on the couch and she can have her bed back. But girls, I want to stay with you forever because, well, I really like your mom a lot. Actually, I love her. And do you want to kiss her? Violet giggled. The others started to giggle, their eyes dancing in merriment. He grinned. Actually, yes, I do. Do you want to marry her? Rose asked. The girls burst out laughing as if this was a great joke. Well, so much for waiting for him and Elizabeth to sit down with them and tell them together. Well, I think that would be wonderful, he said. If you marry her, then you have to be our daddy, Heather said, folding her arms across her chest. The others quieted and turned to stare at him. He swallowed hard. Um, yeah, so what do you think about that? Does that bother you? Do you want to be our daddy, she demanded, not bothering to answer his question. They were very much like their mother, Keegan thought. He wasn't sure what would be the best answer. He wasn't sure if what he said here would have some sort of long-lasting effect. But all he could do was tell the truth. I would love to be your dad, he said softly. Mine too, Rose qualified. He smiled, all of yours. I want you to be my daddy, Heather said. I love you. He had to clear his throat. I love you too, Heather. He looked around at all the expectant eyes. And you too, Lily. And you too, Daisy. And you too, Violet. And you too, Rose. He drew a breath. Where's your mom? It's a secret, Heather said. She's not home? They shook their heads. She left you here with me? No, she left us with Graham's. Then where is Graham's, he asked. She sent us to ask you if you're hungry yet. She's making you some biscuits and stuff, Violet said. Oh, biscuits and stuff, that sounds good. Yeah, Graham's is the best cooker in the world, Rose said. I like to eat all my food, Daisy said. Me too, Lily added. So tell me the big secret. Where did your mom go? We can't tell you, Heather answered, frowning at her sisters to make sure they didn't answer. Well, then, I guess I'll just have to get up and find her myself, he said. It won't do you a bit of good, Miss Maddie said as she poked her head in the bedroom door. Hey, Miss Maddie, Keegan said, I haven't seen you since right after Jacob was born. I've missed you. Maddie smiled sweetly. Hey, yourself, you handsome man. Can you tell me where Lizzie's gone off to? No, he frowned. I, I understand it's a secret, but I don't want her going off alone. She's not alone. Now, are you ready to eat a little something? He sighed. Well, when you're doing the cooking, I'm always ready. She smiled with pleasure. I'll be back with your tray. New scene. So where is she? Keegan asked, his eyes searching the room. It'd been days of all this secret stuff, and he was growing tired of it. Just relax, John said. She's going to meet you here. You know I don't want her out alone. She's not alone, I swear. A beautiful redhead approached the table. Hello, John, she purred huskily. She bent down and kissed Jody's cheek, then moved around the table to kiss both Chaz and Lisa on the cheek. Hey, Chaz. Hey, sis. Megan, you get more beautiful every time I see you, Chaz said. He turned to Keegan. I'd like you to meet Keegan Tanner. Keegan, this is my sister-in-law and owner-operator of this snazzy joint. Keegan stood slowly and extended his hand. It's nice to meet you. Please don't get up. It's a pleasure to get to meet you. Thank you, I mean, for, you know, for what you did. He grimaced as he said the usual words, just doing my job. Noticing his discomfort, she quickly changed the subject. So, you're Lizzie's fiancé? She turned to Lisa. He's kind of cute. Ain't no kind of to it, Lisa agreed. Where is my fiancé? Keegan asked grumpily, apparently not liking the focus of the conversation. John grinned at him. Megan smiled. You'll see her in a minute. She sauntered away. They ordered drinks and appetizers, and by the time the food and drink arrived, Keegan was at his wit's end. He downed his bourbon and looked around impatiently. Okay, I can't take any more. This is making me... Ladies and gentlemen, Keegan looked toward the small stage where Megan stood in front of a microphone. I am very excited to introduce to you a new talent that we discovered right here in Pine Forest. 
please join me in giving a warm welcome to our own Liz Anderson. Keegan's jaw dropped open. He would have looked over at John, but he couldn't take his eyes off the stage. A gorgeous blonde, dressed in a long, tight, red dress with what appeared to be diamonds sprinkled over the bodice, walked shyly out on stage. The top of the dress was cut low, and he wasn't sure how he felt about that. She smiled, that sweet smile that always tore him up, and eased onto a tall stool with the mic in her hand. What do you think about that? John leaned over and asked. I don't like that dress one bit, he said. Jody giggled. Then I guess that makes it perfect. He shot her a glare. Then he forgot everything because his Elizabeth began to sing. It was the sweetest sound he'd ever heard in his life. He'd always thought she sounded like an angel. If not for the scarlet dress, he would have imagined she'd just been sent straight from heaven to serenade them. The song was slow and sensual, and the crowd's silence was proof that she was mesmerizing. As the number drew to an end, John hit Keegan on the shoulder. What do you think about that, bro? Does she blow you away like she does me? Keegan turned his head to eye John and tried to speak, but his throat was clogged with emotion, so he merely nodded. Turning back, he watched as Elizabeth stood and replaced the mic in the stand. At first, he thought she was finished, but she smoothed her dress, pressing her hands over her thighs, smiled sweetly, and started on the next song. This one, a more lively number, had her body swaying, her hips moved slightly to the music, her smile widened, and Keegan realized she was having fun. He remembered the night he'd asked her what her dreams were, what she wanted for herself. At the time, she couldn't think of anything except getting by, providing enough for the girls. Maybe she discovered she really did have desires and dreams. He smiled. She absolutely glowed. He could feel her happiness, and that made him happy. <clears throat> she sang two more songs before she took her final bow, and Keegan grimaced as he pushed himself to his feet to go to the stage and escort her down. Less than a week out of the hospital, he still felt pain, but he didn't care. Hearing his angel sing had been a privilege. He moved forward and got to her just as she took the last step down from the stage. Keegan stepped in front of her. She smiled up at him. He brushed a stray hair back from her face. You blew me away, Elizabeth, he said, his voice low. You really liked it? Snaking his arm around her waist, he pulled her against him. Are you kidding me? You were fantastic. I had no idea you could sing. I mean, not like that. You never told me. She shrugged as she placed her hands on his shoulders. I never thought much about it. I've always enjoyed singing, and Lisa and Jody convinced me that I should do something with it. You were incredible. I mean, Lord, Elizabeth, you should be famous. You should make a record. You'd win a Grammy. She laughed. I think you're getting a little ahead, but I'm glad I have your vote of confidence. Oh, Elizabeth, you have me completely. I love you, and I am so proud of you. They turned and made their way back to the table where Lizzie received many more pats on the back. Glancing toward Keegan, though, she realized that he was hurting. I am so tired, she whispered in his ear. I guess after all the strain of the past week, it's gotten to me. Would you be really upset if we went on home? His eyes searched her face. She was saying that for him. He was sure. He hadn't been able to fool her, and if he said he'd rather stay, her fun would be tarnished by her worry for him. He had no choice but to agree. Once they arrived at the little cottage, Lizzie thanked Miss Maddie for watching the girls, and Keegan insisted on walking her over to the inn, and when he returned, he joined Lizzie as she peeked in on each sleeping angel. They're so sweet when they're sleeping, Lizzie said with a sigh. They have my heart, Keegan whispered. When Jeff and I found the kids in that warehouse the night Jeff was taken, I wanted to get them out right then, instead of waiting for backup. I kept imagining it being the girls in that room, frightened and crying and needing their mom. It made me crazy, and it made it very hard for me to back off. Well, I'm glad you feel that way about them. I think Bradley's probably very happy that you've come into our lives. I think he knows that you'll take good care of his girls. As I said before, I'll do my best to honor him, but make no mistake, you're not his anymore. You belong to me. She smiled. I like it when you get all cranky.
Whatever, he grumbled as he took her hand. I want to sleep with you. But, I mean, actually sleep. I want to be near you. I want to hold you. Can I do that, please? The girls will be asleep. She nodded. Yes. Yes, Keegan. She left the bathroom door open a crack, and he couldn't help it. He watched her wash her face cream of the heavy... He watched her wash her face clean of the heavy makeup and change. She was beautiful. She approached the bed in a soft pink nightshirt and climbed in beside him. Keegan grunted as he turned his body toward her and draped his arm over her waist. This is great, isn't it? He asked. I mean, here we are, finally together, safe. I don't have to leave anytime soon. You don't have to go anywhere. And the girls are sleeping safely in the other room. It is wonderful, she said, tilting her face up to him. He took what she offered without hesitation. His mouth moved over hers, firm and demanding. I have another surprise for you, Lizzie said softly. You do? He asked, smiling at the apprehension in her eyes. How bad could it be? Uh-huh, but I'm a little afraid to tell you. Well, you don't ever have to be afraid of me, Elizabeth. Surely you know that. She sighed. I'm, I'm not afraid of you. I'm just unsure of your reaction. His brow furrowed. Better just spit it out. Okay. Well, um, you know the engagement ring you bought me? Yes. Did you lose it? Because I think I'll be upset about that, he teased. I may have to sit you in the timeout chair. She giggled and held her hand up for him to see. No, I didn't lose it. Well, then what about it? Eyeing the ring, she smiled. It's perfect. He grinned. I'm glad you like it, but I don't understand. Why would you be afraid to tell me that? What I mean is, you don't have to change a thing. My fingers are a little swollen, so you don't have to get it resized. Not yet, anyway. Okay, no problem. We can wait on that. We'll just change the six diamonds to five whenever you want to get it resized. No, you don't have to do that. I'm trying to tell you. It's perfect. But the five diamonds around the larger diamond, they represent your kids, and that's right, and you don't have to change it. His brow furrowed, then his eyes grew large. You're not telling me. He stopped, sat straight up, gasping at the pain as he did. Are you saying you're pregnant? Her lips pressed together. I think I am. I'll know for sure soon. Are you upset? No, not with you anyway, but I am with me. That day in the hospital, I mean, protection never crossed my mind. And that night at the motel, I wasn't thinking. I'm sorry. I should have been more responsible. She frowned. Don't you want to have a child, Keegan? Well, I suppose, of course, one day. But asking you to have another child would be extremely selfish of me. I love you, Keegan. And if I'm pregnant, then I'm glad I'm carrying your child. You are? She smiled, yes. How could I not be? It's like the ultimate gift that I could give to you. And it's a gift for me too. And I'm not sorry. Not one bit. He thought carefully, realizing he could have hurt her feelings just now. So you want to have my baby? With all my heart. You're sure you don't mind? I don't mind. It wouldn't matter if I did mind. I don't believe in killing babies. Neither do I. She smiled. That, I know. She placed her hand protectively over her stomach. We are so very blessed. Yes, we are. Lisbeth, six children. My mother's going to go ape over this. Lizzie laughed. We can tell them when we go up for Thanksgiving. Oh, man, Lisbeth, we're going to have a baby. Maybe, well, probably. I haven't missed any time yet. Oh, then... How do you, maybe, well, probably, I haven't missed my time yet. Oh, then how do you know? Well, I've already been having some morning sickness, and I'm swelling, and my breasts are getting bigger, and well, I've had five babies. I just know how it feels. He moved close and placed his hand on her belly. There's a baby in there. Our baby. He looked up into her eyes. Don't cry. I'm sorry. I'm just so happy. Me too, Lisbeth, me too. She sniffed. So that brings me to the next problem, she said softly. Dare I ask? She moved closer. 
Lie down. I can see you're in pain and I can't talk to you while you're suffering. He grinned at her. Yes, ma'am. He lay flat on his back while Lizzie moved close and peered down at his face. She stroked his cheek. Because I'm pregnant, I want to either get married very soon before I'm showing or wait until after the baby is born. Her lips pressed tightly together while she waited for his answer. Elizabeth, I'd marry you tonight if it were possible. We don't have to wait, unless, of course, you want to. I mean, women, they, they sort of like to do it up big, right? I don't care about that. I just want to be a big, I just don't want to be a big, fat prego when I marry you. Playing it safe, he made no comment on her comment. Thankfully, she went on. I mean, I'm already ashamed because I had sex when we weren't married. I don't want to be so brazen as to parade myself in front of everyone. Know what I mean? He let her words sink in. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Maybe we can, you know, like do some praying together or something and like ask God to forgive us. I can't imagine that he can stay mad at you for too long or at us. She touched his face. I think that is one of the kindest things you've ever said to me. I didn't think you believed in God. He shrugged. I didn't think so either until you came along, but still I had questions. And then I met Ricky Kino when Jeff was in the hospital and almost out of the blue, he felt inclined to tell me stuff like stuff that answered all my questions. It was amazing. He said, God pressed him to say the things he said to me. And then you told me you just knew all that stuff in DC was going to work out. And I believed you. Lizzie smiled. Our God is amazing and he loves us. He loves you. Like I said before, I think you're one of his warriors. And you, my sweet Elizabeth, must be one of his angels. Yeah, an unmarried pregnant angel. Again, hon, I am sorry. I knew what I was doing. Yeah, I know you think you knew what you were doing. What is that supposed to mean? He changed the subject completely. Elizabeth, what kind of wedding do you want? She thought a minute. Well, I don't know what kind of shape we're in financially. We need to get the house on the market and maybe, uh, I guess I need to let you in on some information. Money is not a problem, sweetheart. It's not ever going to be a problem. I made good money at the Bureau and I lived on practically nothing for years. Most of my earnings went straight to an account that my father handled. He is a futures genius and I'm set. We're set, and my parents are rolling in the stuff. You mean you're rich? He smiled. I mean money is not a problem. Whatever you want, it's yours. Big wedding, big honeymoon, you got it. Anything you want, Elizabeth, for you or the children, there is no problem. I had no idea. Wow. It's like I hit the lottery. She gasped, covering her mouth. Oh, I didn't mean that like it sounds. It's just that... Keegan laughed. It's just that you've always had to struggle. I understand that. I feel relieved to be able to give you and the girls everything you need or want. Lizzie sighed thoughtfully. It would be so nice to buy a Christmas present and a birthday present for each of them without worrying about how I'm going to do it. Their birthdays are all around Christmas too, aren't they? Violet and Rose were born on Christmas Day. Heather was born January 10th and Lily and Daisy were born December 19th. Wow, all within a few weeks, he said. And our littlest one, it'll be due when? Do you know yet? Well, I haven't been to the doctor yet, but I'm thinking sometime in July. I guess I'd better get to building our house so we can be all moved in way before the baby comes. Build a house? You're going to build us a house? Well, of course. It's a little crowded in this cottage, don't you think? Do I get to help decide what the house looks like? Of course. He looked up at her face and smiled. Are you happy? I'm so happy I think I might burst. Elizabeth, I've wanted to make you happy for so long now, and I'm happy you're happy. He sighed contentedly. So back to the wedding. I was thinking we may as well put it smack dab in the middle of everything else. What about New Year's Day? Her eyes lit up. Really? You like that idea? Oh, yes. 
How perfect to start a new life on the first day of the new year. And that will give you about eight weeks to plan. And I'm sure Jody and Lisa are going to want in on that. And if you, if you don't mind, my mom and sisters would probably like to help. Of course I don't mind. I really liked your mom when I met her in the hospital. We're going to get along just fine. And that is the end of chapter 16.